The Godskin Duo is a hard boss, right? When I asked my community if they were the worst mandatory boss in Elden Ring, most of you agree. You wanted a refined 1v1 against a fallen hero. You compromised. You got Absorbal off from Doctor Who instead. Soulsborne players will tell you the two Tonys are the worst thing since the frigid outskirts. But not really. When I first played Elden Ring, I had the same condition, so I studied it, and I came to this conclusion. I was being a bitch. Every playthrough, you make a beeline into the Dragon Temple, only to be hit with Ornstein and Smo from Wish. <laughs> At that time, I know what's going through your mind. You hope they wouldn't spawn. You hope Fatty would get stuck on the pillars. You hope they won't throw that fireball. I don't live off that hope shit. I wish there was more of these skinners. I wish for phase two. I wish they would throw that fireball. I'm not contrarian enough to convince you the Godskin duo is a great fight. It's obvious taking two standalone bosses and slapping them together in the final area of the game wasn't a great idea, especially when there was little to no change in their AI or movesets. At best, this is a late game damage check and at worst, a roadblock for an unprepared player. But the hate comes from a misconception of what type of boss the Godskin duo are, and a fatal flaw earns the community's scorn for the wrong reason. Let me explain. Soulsborne bosses can be split into two categories. Gimmick bosses have a quirk or mechanic that is the intended way to beat them. Iconic bosses test your ability to learn movesets, positioning, and dodge timings. The fights from software are known for. They may have a weakness or mechanic you can exploit. For example, Margit Moog, Morgot, and Moog. In these fights, you can use the respective Omen Shackle to pin them into place for a moment. However, this doesn't give you enough of an advantage to be the definitive way to defeat them. Although there is an argument the Lord of Blood could be considered a gimmick boss, we'll get to that in a minute. Whereas if you attempted to fight Rikard without the Serpent Hunter, you would be putting yourself at a distinct disadvantage. The Chub skins get hate because players mistake them for an iconic fight, not a gimmick fight, since there is a definitive way to defeat them, that being sleep. Not using sleep puts you at a disadvantage. Godskin Duo isn't an awful boss, Elden Ring just does a terrible job of communicating what type of fight it is to the player. What in the actual... So you end up trying to brute force a square into the circle shape. It's no revelation that the dynamic duo like a nap. And there are plenty of ways to inflict sleep. Arrows, pots, St. Trina's sword. I like to get a little freaky with it and summon Gideon's favourite tomboy. Find the Albinoric woman. Sleep does trivialise the fight, but that's okay. It's a gimmick fight. You're beating it the way Miyazaki intended. Although I do believe you get the most out of these games by going solo melee against bosses, I also think you can play the game however the fuck you want. Elden Ring gives more ways than ever to manage difficulty. For example, as well as being a vital part of a build, spirit summons almost function as an accessibility feature. So a player who wants a more relaxed experience can dial the challenge down to a more manageable level. It's a method of choosing your own difficulty. If you want more of a challenge but don't fancy going solo, you can summon Banal. He can easily hold aggro and 1v1 a godskin. But Precursor, the game is two years old. It's easy to say sleep is the answer now. How would a new player know this without looking it up? And this is why the boss fight falls apart. This video is sponsored by me. I'm happy to share I've set up a merch page. For the lore bro mains, we have Return to Monkey. And for all the strugglers, we have Big F Sword. You heard me right. Big F Sword. The design for this one is on the front and the back. Both designs are available in white and black and black and white on t-shirts and hoodies. If you're interested, you can follow the link in the description. Miyazaki fumbled the Godskin duo, forgetting to add any reference to them being weak to the great EP in game. But we can decipher the Godskins are weak to sleep by looking at those fucking bags under their eyes. They look like they need a bloody good nap, they do. By the time the player faces the duo, they would have likely fought the individual noble and apostle, both of which are actually pretty good individual bosses. So you'll figure out quickly these two do not complement each other's movesets, and they certainly don't belong 
belong together in a straight-up fight. However, you can't expect the player to make an inference based on this when there's already half a dozen lazy gang fights in the game. Also, I think it's worth noting the language used in the Godskin Swaddling Cloth item description does infantilize them. The Glomide Queen cradles newborn apostles swaddled in this cloth. Soon they will grow to become the death of the gods. If I wanted to make an absolutely massive reach here, you could infer the godskins are like children who need to go to bed. Go sleep, go sleep. This item description kind of implies that the apostles are the infant form of the godskins. And a perceptive player may take note of this and realise there is a preferred alternate method to tackle this boss fight. However, even taking that into account, relying on a vague talisman description in a side dungeon nowhere near the arena kind of debunks this theory. Although this is from Soft's MO. Look at the purifying crystal tier for the Mogolesters fight. Sex. It strikes the balance of being easy enough to find, but also easily missed, outright telling you it's the key to defeating him, and the Neil transition into phase 2 is crazy enough to make the player think, I must be missing something here, rather than, this is bullshit. The Godskin duo doesn't have an equivalent. This means rather than being seen as the puzzle piece for the Godskin duo fight, Sleep is seen as... Cheese which makes the player feel like they've cheated as opposed to if they tackled the boss head on. <laughs> Adding an item such as the swaddling cloth to Faramazula that states more explicitly the godskins are weak to sleep could have avoided a lot of community backlash, or even a final conversation with Banal tipping you off before you inevitably fight him. I thought we needed one more dialogue with him before the confrontation anyway. Banal could echo Hawkeye Go and take pity on you after being defeated by the duo, revealing their weakness. However, the boss fight is inherently flawed from its inception. Even as a trivial gimmick boss, the godskin duo is unnecessary padding. I would have much rather seen a unique head godskin, such as the matriarch from the convergence mod. But with the DLC just around the corner, it's possible something similar could become reality. What do you think about the godskin duo? Are they a gimmick fight or am I just on copia? Check out one of these videos next, take it easy, and I'll see you on the next one.